Hello Year 5. Today we are going to look at one of the parts of our toolkit, figurative language. This will be a revision lesson because we have looked at this before. Your starter activity is to write down all of the types of figurative language that you can remember from previous lessons. If you want a challenge, can you also give a definition or an example for each type of figurative language? Pause the video. On the left hand side, you can see a list of various figurative language techniques. Hopefully you included some of these when you wrote them down. On the right hand side, you can see definitions of figurative language techniques. Your task is to match the technique with its definition. You don't need to draw lines. What you can do is write out simile and then write out which definition you think matches it. Same with metaphor, same with personification, etc, etc. Pause the video while you do this task. I am now going to talk through the different types of figurative language. So hopefully you will be able to mark your definitions as we go along. First of all, what is alliteration? Can you explain what it is? Can you give an example? Alliteration is where words next to each other or near to each other begin with the same sound. For example, Betsy bought bigger bottoms for baby Billy. How many times can you say that really quickly? Was your definition correct earlier? Can you remember what onomatopoeia is? Also test yourself. Can you spell it without looking? We sometimes refer to onomatopoeia as sound effect. It's where the word reflects the sound that is being made. For example, buzz or click or squeal. Can you think of any other examples? What is a simile? Can you remember there are two key words that tell us whether something is a simile? A simile is where you compare something to something else and you use the words like or as. Now remember you need to be careful with as because it is also a subordinating conjunction. So make sure you're reading carefully to check that it is definitely a simile. You will often see as twice, as smart as an owl for example. Or you might in a simile use the word like. My backpack was like a bag of bricks. Lots of people, my adult friends included, I've asked them, believe me, get confused between similes and metaphors. Can you remember what the difference is? What is a metaphor? A metaphor is where you call something something else. For example, the strawberry was a fresh summer day. The test was a long, never-ending marathon. So it's when you call something something it's not. You don't use like or as because that's a comparison. That would be a simile. I was 15 years old when I found out that this word is pronounced hyperbole, not hyperbole. So that was very embarrassing in my GCSE English class. So save yourself the embarrassment now and learn that this is called hyperbole. Hyperbole is a fancy name for what? Hyperbole is when you exaggerate something and make it sound over the top. For example, I ate 5,000 pancakes for breakfast. I'd love to think we could do that, but it's not realistic. The walk was a million miles long. And finally, I'm sure you can all remember what personification is. The clue is in the name itself. Personification is where you give a non-human thing human qualities. For example, the tree leaves danced in the wind. Can you think of any other examples? Just check through 
your figurative language techniques, have you managed to match them with the correct definition? Thinking about what we've just heard. If not, make sure you edit it now to, because this will help you with your writing later on. Have a look at the picture. Imagine that you are standing in the middle of the forest, looking up through the canopy of trees at a bright blue sky. What I want you to do is write a sentence about this picture. Choose a figurative language technique to do so. If you want to challenge yourself, can you write six different sentences using each of the different figurative language techniques? Pause the video while you do the task. Your next task is to see if you can identify all of the figurative language techniques that I have used in my paragraph. I suggest that you read the paragraph out loud because then it might be easier to identify the techniques. You could just write them down using the first letter of each technique to show you which one's which. So for example, A equals, and then write down where you think examples of alliteration are. O equals etc etc. The answers are on the next slide so pause the video while you do the task. How did you get on? Did you manage to find all of the techniques or were there some that were hidden from you? Pause the video while you go through and check your answers. Here is the task for one idea today. Have a look at the four different figurative language techniques here, similes, metaphors, hyperbole, personification, and write down, normally you'd underline it, obviously you're looking at a screen, write down where you think, for example, the simile is in the sentence or the metaphor. So if we look at the first one, the clock struck midnight and the sky was as black as ink, where is the simile in there? I can see double as, as black as ink. So that's what I would write down for number one. So go through, there's quite a few here. See how you get on. The answers will be on the next slide. So pause the video and try this task if you want to do one idea. Here are the answers for one idea. Pause the video to check to see if you were correct. Moving on, if you want to do a few ideas today, you need to write one sentence about each of the pictures, so six mm. sentences in total, and you need to describe the scene using figurative language. I would focus on similes, alliteration and personification, but if you can write a sentence for each of the figurative language techniques, that would be great. Please don't write six sentences using alliteration, try and vary it. If you want to do relate, you choose one of the pictures and you're going to write a paragraph using the different types of figurative language, setting the scene for the picture. If you'd like to do extend, you are going to write the opening paragraph to a story using one of these pictures to spark off your ideas. You've got to set the scene at the beginning of your story using figurative language techniques. For everybody, once you have finished writing, you need to read back through your work and underline in different colours if you have them, but don't worry if not, where you have used the figurative language techniques to make sure that you've definitely included them in your writing today. If you've missed one, can you go back and add it in? The video will end here, so I hope you enjoy this task. If you like, you can upload your writing to Padlet or you could email it to your teacher. Well done today and I'll see you soon.